what is hidden must be larger. Wear a full face of makeup with a skirt to your knees or a plunging neckline with no makeup at all. If you have kitten heels or flats, then pair them with the shortest dress you own. If the heels are high, then let the hemline drop to the floor. If you have small breasts, then ditch the bra, wear thin shirts, and what you lack in voluptuousness, you make up for in daring. Moisturized, soft skin is as good as lingerie, and a secret is sexier than a garter belt. Let's say a woman is walking toward you, and she has a full-length, full-coverage black gown on. You stand and you talk with her for a little bit. She's pretty, she's got a nice figure maybe. And she says, I'm gonna go and get a drink. And she turns around and she walks to the bar to get a drink and boom, her back, her whole back is out. Now that gown is erotic. Her back is this holy thing. That gown is not a dress anymore. It's a window. It's a pair of binoculars. Better yet, it's a peephole. It's a game of give and take. The eroticism of isolating portions of the skin, the hint of a silhouette even, like let's say you are wearing that gown, that full length gown, but it's very tailored. Your figure is now the erotic thing. Let's say the back wasn't open because you can see the outline, but not everything that lies beneath the clothes. There must always be something separating you from from the body. That's what modesty is for. There must always be a door with a lock that you need to pick before you can get to the main event. You want eroticism. Eroticism is hidden sex, like hearing it behind a closed door. Modesty is gonna be the door, and sexiness is, well, the sex. That's the metaphor that you want to embody. Give yourself to people, but give them an idea. One glorified, idolized peace. Never underestimate your legs. Legs, my God, if you've got them, use them. Legs are the most exhibitionist part of the body because they're the ladder that leads up to you. <laughs> they are your foundation. And my goodness, learn how to walk with the rest of your body. I see so many women today, they walk around like their legs are holding up a potato sack. Do you wanna know what's sexy but modest? Imagine a woman with long trousers or jeans on, but she's wearing sky-high heels, perhaps the Socate Louboutins. She's laid back in every other way. Maybe she has her hair up, maybe she even has a t-shirt on, but she has that swinging stride with the heels. I mean, a woman in heels is lethal. All that said, the more important thing here is a woman wearing heels but a woman wearing heels who knows how to walk in heels. If you do not know how to walk in heels, put them away or learn. I have seen too many women walk down the street like they're on stilts, like there's no difference between the bottom of their foot and where their heel is. And learning how to walk in heels is learning how to be comfortable in all of your body and using your body and it's honestly quite an exercise to walk in heels and the way that it makes you move. And people have observed for a long time the magic of heels and how they make you walk, how they make you walk slower. So learn how to walk in heels. If you don't know how to use your body, if you don't know how to manage all of the bends and curves of walking like that, like walking in heels, what what walking in heels requires of your body, the agility of your body. Don't even bother, don't put them on. If they're not for you, if you don't feel confident in heels, if you don't want to learn how to walk in heels, sex up the rest of the garments that you wear. Putting on heels is, is a statement in itself, and a lot of women don't even do it anymore. So putting on heels is, is plenty of sexy, and the modesty can come in in other places, but all the modesty is in having two feet firmly on the ground. It's a good place to start if you don't care for heels. The rest of your garment can have a lot to say about you, but it doesn't have to be too over the top. Too much going on with clothing 
and then having high, high heels. It can be very uncomfortable for some people. You need to have that kind of proportion, that kind of balance between very sexy, which are the heels, and your outfit or vice versa. And the walk, regardless if you wear heels or not, the walk is everything. Learn how to walk. Learn how to use your body even without heels on. Heels, I think, are almost like training wheels for teaching yourself how to walk because then whenever you take them off, you still have that kind of swing in your hips and leaning back a little bit. If you learn how to walk, all of your clothing will disappear, even if you have a fireman suit on. A sexy but modest woman knows what her strengths and weaknesses are, but she especially knows that there is opportunity in both of them. People forget that the sexiest features on a woman are the ones that we think the least about or even ones that we are insecure about. Never forget the beauty of your joints, of your wrists, your ankles, the back of your neck, and fingers even. Updos accentuate the neck. Dangling jewelry jingles on your wrists and it sounds like bells. Rings and long lacquered nails remind the observer of touch. Never forget about the hands. The possibility for touch, the phantom touch that they feel in their mind, leave a lot of things up to the imagination for the observer. But make sure that you are the conductor for where their train of thought goes. And you can do this with hands. Your entire body can be used to speak a language to people around you to communicate. You could be wearing nothing noticeable at all, nothing sexy, modest. It could be a sweatsuit for all it matters, but your hands, if your hands are graceful and supple and elegant and poised, the hands lead the observer to the right place, even if the rest of you doesn't. In this case, the hands are the eroticized thing, or maybe it's your ankle, your foot, maybe it's the back of your neck, the way you wear your hair. This is this highlighting a certain part of your body and then letting the rest be subdued so that this thing can look special and can be holy. And in this way, you should figure out your star feature. Maybe it's your hands, maybe it's your cleavage. Make it yours, make it your signature. Something should be wild, should be wild. It should be like an animal that's behind two inches of glass. Something should be left undone, a detail forgotten, something left to carelessness. Never have tan lines. And make sure a small detail of whatever outfit you're wearing exposes that. Today, being sexy but modest is honestly doing things that were scandalous in the 50s and a breath of fresh air in the 60s. That's the perfect appropriation, I think. And today, honestly, really, any kind of restraint is erotic at this point. You know, I read somewhere that men were afraid of the slinky slip dresses of the 1920s because they were afraid that women would be more promiscuous because if a garment was just as easy to put on, then it would be just as easy to take it off. I think there's a lot to gain from knowing that. If you're gonna cover up, let's say, if you choose this particular day to cover up every inch of your beautiful skin, then at least let it look like that thing that's covering you could easily come off. It's all about proportion. How much do you hide? How much is left to be revealed? What is hidden must always be larger. Everything up front is a short fuse. You want continuity of ecstasy, a fluid, drawn out movement, lingering and know that you have the power to withhold. Reveal what you want and when you want to. I think it's important to know that what you hide doesn't always have to be part of your body. It can also be secrets. A thing that a woman especially must always know is that you can be completely naked and yet Within you, there is always something concealed, something that nobody can ever take from you and nobody can ever know. Your thoughts, your ideations, your sicknesses. It is the privilege of being two creatures at once. It's mystical, really. Modesty is about secrecy. Modesty is about discretion. If you wanna be sexy, but modest, then you need to keep yourself away from people. 
You need to resist the urge to socialize, to empathize, and to share. Being a creature of mystery is absolutely imperative. You have to appear simpler than you are. And then you let the other person sense your depth. It needs to be intuition. It needs to be instinctive. Let that depth be a gut feeling that they can't shake. If you're amped up too high, it's going to look like desperation. It's too much, too sexy, too overwhelming. And maybe you can handle it. Maybe that's for you, but you wouldn't be watching this video if that was the case. If it's not for you though, like it isn't for me. I've never liked over the top sexiness ever. I always liked a little bit of modesty for myself, which is why I made this video. I have experienced this firsthand. If you do amp it up too high and it's not for you and you can't handle it, then you will eventually cower in the shadow that you cast on yourself. An example of this was I had purchased a pair of very, very high heels, six inch heels for myself. I was very excited. I thought I was gonna have them for the rest of my life. And I found out that I hated being really tall. I already have very bright blonde hair and kind of piercing blue eyes. And that attracts enough attention to me as it is. But to be tall on top of that was too much for me. I really love high, high heels and pictures and on other women, but I just didn't really care for them on me. And I found a sexiness through modesty by wearing kitten heels, by wearing shorter shoes. Sometimes some people can handle and excel using an overt sexuality. Some people like me don't. And if you, if you don't, if you can't handle it, then choose to be the animal on the prowl rather than an animal that's mid-leap toward the throat of its prey. Choose to be langorious, leisurely, waiting, watching, observing, noticing, patient. Your sexuality should be this concealed precious stone. And there are stories about precious stones, lore and myth and symbolism and secret powers and all that. These stories come from scarcity, these stories exist because the stones are rare, just like you and anything that you conceal within you. Modesty, hiding, concealing, gives mystique to sexuality and legend. Everyone wants to believe in the mirage, in the illusion, in the lie. So give people what they want and then take it away. Thank you.